Thank you very much, and greetings to you, Madam Rajabi, and to all of those tens of thousands of people who are gathered virtually. It is a real tribute to the organizational skills of the NCRI that we could pull together in the middle of a worldwide pandemic this kind of gathering to bring together old friends and new friends uh, in support of freedom for the people of Iran. You know, we've been through a lot uh, together over the last decade. When I first came to the first meeting of this organization in Paris, uh, there were still members of the MEK in Camp Ashraf in Iraq. Soon we were working to try to increase the living conditions in Camp Liberty. And thankfully, because of the work of many of the people uh, who have been a part of this movement, uh, we saw finally those uh, individuals move to Albania. And now I think we are able to focus entirely our efforts on the real struggle, the struggle for freedom for the people of Iran. We've seen, again, over the last few years, uprisings in big cities and small cities across uh, Iran, people who were pushing for more food, better jobs, a better economy, but also, importantly, for freedom, for the right to be able to select their own leaders and to be able to live in a country that honored civil liberties. We've seen in this last year the toll that the pandemic has taken, and Manam Rajavi talked about the 70,000 people who are dead uh, in Iran from this terrible pandemic. The fact is, we don't know how many people have died. That's really an estimate of those we can see. There are people dying every day uh, in Iran because of the collapse of the medical system and the total indifference of the regime towards their plight. The regime has been interested in only one thing over the last many years, and that is in building a nuclear weapon. That has been where the regime has put their top brains and uh, their money is to trying to build a destructive weapon. Well, even that now seems to be collapsing, as we saw with the explosions at Natanz and other explosions, uh, mysterious explosions around uh, the country. So there's no question that Iran is collapsing. The regime is collapsing. But the real question is, what will take its place? And who will take the place of the Ayatollahs? And who will decide who will take the place? Well, we know one thing. We know who the regime fears is going to take its place. And we saw no better evidence of that uh, than in the attempted bombing of the 2018 gathering of the NCRI in Villepont, France. That was an attempt to take out Madame Rajavi and to kill as many of the supporters and terrorizing those who would dare to stand up to the regime. As uh, Louis Free and others have talked about today, Thankfully, we have seen that that plot was not only interrupted, but that the people who are involved in that uh, are going to come to justice. They have been arraigned this week, and we are hopeful that uh, they will remain behind bars uh, for the rest of their lives. Well, why is it that the regime fears Ahmadam Rajavi? Is it because she has tanks, because she has guns, no, it's not for any of those reasons. It's for the simple reason that she stands for ideas of liberty, that her 10-point plan is the best hope for the freedom of the Iranian people. She has been a beacon in the wilderness to gather together those 
who support a free Iran in which the people of that country can enjoy equal freedoms, equal rights before the courts. They have the, will have the power to assemble, the right to express their own views, and the right to worship as they choose. So that's what the regime in Iran fears most. And I am so proud to be here with others who have supported Madame Rajavi to say to the regime, your time is coming. We've waited a long time, but your days are numbered, and those who will replace you with the strength of their ideas. And I say to all of you, Hazer, Hazer, Hazer. Thank you very much.